Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Ms. Corey, and I'm going to give you Unit 1 Lessons 2 video today. So while we go through this lesson, um, and as you're doing the Ed Puzzle, make sure that you're filling out the stuff that is on your study guide for um, under Lesson 2. All right, so this is going to be pretty much the same probably throughout the the semester about how my lessons work. Um, so you're going to follow along with me with these slides, of course, on the Edpuzzle. I will also post these slides just in case you like want to go back and look at them. You certainly can do that. Uh, yes, you do need to complete this Edpuzzle for full credit. Now, I'll tell you this. There are some questions that I will ask you on the Edpuzzle. And on the Edpuzzle, those questions are not graded, okay? Well, like I'll grade them to make sure that you did them, but if you got them wrong, because a lot of them are questions that I'm sure 99% of you don't know the answer to, um, that is okay if you get it wrong, okay? I am just grading on completion for this one. Um, so if I do ask you a question on Edpuzzle, it is gonna be highlighted in a light blue text on my slideshow. So just kind of a little bit of a heads up. And then also anything that I want you to write down in the study guide is going to be highlighted in gray. Um, and of course, if you have any questions at all, please email me or come in for my office hours on Thursday and Friday from 12 to 1. All right, so learning target for today. Uh, students will be able to describe what early humans were like and why they migrated out of Africa. So here's the first question that's going to pop up on your Edpuzzle. What is time? Who defines it? And who and how do you describe it? All right, so what is history? So it is a chronological record of significant events as affecting a nation or institution, usually of their causes. So you're probably like, what the heck, Miss Corey? Like, I've been in history classes like all my life. Like, I know what history is. Yes, but you probably have never taken a course of such an expansive length of time that we're going to go through because we're literally going from like a few hundred thousand years to go all the way up to modern day throughout this year long course. Um, so just got to make sure we're all on the same page. Next question, what is time? So the measured or measurable period during which an action, process, or condition exists or continues. OK, so that is how we define time. How do we measure time? Um, that really depends who you are, seconds, minutes, hours. That's usually what we do throughout the world. How do we measure time again? We do days, decades, weeks, centuries, years, millenniums. And calendars. Of course, we all have calendars. If we didn't have calendars, you wouldn't know when school starts. So is our calendar the only calendar to exist? No, it is definitely not. Uh, for example, here's the Aztec calendar. That one became kind of famous quite a few years ago. Um, other calendars. So today is the year 5,782. Wait, what? Yes, it is actually. If you go through the Hebrew calendar, okay? So if you went by the Hebrew calendar of Elul, it would be the year 5,782. Um, and the reason for this is because it begins with creation, uh, according to the Jewish faith. Uh, which is calculated to be about 3,760 years before the birth of Christ, which we'll talk about too, by the way. All right. So the year could also be 1444. Uh, but that would be by the Islamic calendar. So theirs begins with the year that Muhammad fled from Mecca. And we'll talk all about Muhammad a little bit later. So here are brings a really good question that I'm going to ask you. What is AD and what is BC? All 
All right, so speaking of calendar, so our calendar has its origins from the birth of Christ, at least the one that we use here in the United States. Um, and don't worry, we'll be talking about the birth of Christ too. Um, and it was originally des des designated AD. So when I say something like, oh, this happened in 100 AD, uh, that stands for Anno Domini, which is the year of the Lord. Um, and the year before AD 1 was designated BC, also known as before Christ. Uh, you can thank this dude for it. Uh, this is our, so we use the Gregorian calendar. Uh, it was introduced in 1582 by Christopher Clavius. I don't know, that's him down there. He looks kind of frumpy, but that's okay, whatever. Uh, so he introduced our present day calendar. Uh, the reason why is because it allows for 365 days and uh, it has a leap year every year that is divisible by four. I'm assuming all of you are probably pretty familiar with this calendar. All right. Oh, here's a picture of the Pope saying A-OK -okay to the Gregorian calendar. So nice. All right. So a lot of people today still use BC and AD. But as a historian and kind of the new trend is we're going away from that. Uh, so instead of BC, we now do something or we call it BCE, which means before common era. Just because we changed like as historians, BC to BCE does not change anything about like the numbers themselves. So 1000 BC would be the same as 1000 BCE, okay? We're just like kind of taking away the religion from it and putting in more of like a, kind of like a non-denominational label at the end of the years. Uh, so throughout this course, I will be referring to this as BCE and CE. And what CE is, is like the old AD. Uh, it is now called Common Era, okay? So you have BCE, before Common Era, CE, Common Era, they mean the same things as the old BC and AD do, um, but just kind of more of the modern version of it. All right, so for example, July 4th, 1776, CE, so Common Era, would equal the exact same thing as July 4th, 1776 AD. Or September 12th, 2022 CE would equal the same thing as September 12, 2022 AD. Okay, same thing with the BC. So July 13th, 100 BCE would equal July 13th, oh, sorry, 100 BC, which is this dude's birthday. We'll talk about him later. Uh, some websites are updated with the BCE and the CE. Uh, some still use BC and AD. Britannica is pretty good about um, like updating their stuff. Stay on the call, please. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. Another thing that we'll use throughout this course is a timeline, which is a chart that shows events that flow over time. Um, it just kind of gives you a big picture of how all these events relate to each other. So you'll see quite a few timelines as we go on. Um, so events are linked to the timeline by lines. Uh, to the point precisely where they occurred. I'm sure you've seen timelines before, but if you haven't, this is a great introduction. Um, and then also timelines are usually divided into even divisions depending on the length of the time. So for example, here, every 10 years is a kind of like a little different brick. All right, so like here is an example of one. This was not my example, but that's okay, of like the September 11th timeline. Um, and this one goes by time of the day instead of years, like we usually see it. All right, next up, we're gonna kind of switch around and we're gonna talk about the very beginning of humans. And when I mean like the very beginning, I mean the very beginning. So here's my question. And I've been asked this question before. And I do have an answer to it. But I want to know what you think. When does history begin? So 
So history begins about 3,400 to about 3,100 BCE. And you're like, wait, but humans have been around longer than that. And you're right. And I'm going to explain why later that's when, as a historian, that's when history begins. Okay. And that reason is, is because that is when writing emerges. So historians typically look at writing for their information. Um, yes, historians can look at artifacts too as well. Uh, but the primary resource that historians get their information from is writing. So that's when history begins. And we'll talk about the people who study stuff before that too. So backing up a little bit to the writing part. So it is invented in Mesopotamia, uh, which you should all know from your Kahoot that you did. There are four distinct places where writing emerges separately. Now, this is really interesting, okay? These four places where writing emerged they did not influence one, each, one another. They all emerged on their own. The humans there invented writing on their own accord. So we talked about Mesopotamia, Egypt, they do theirs in 3,250 BCE, China, they're in 1,200 BCE, uh, and then Southern Mexico and Guatemala is gonna be 500 BCE. That's when all those places invent their own writing system. Uh, so, for example, here, here is an old uh, Mesopotamian cuneiform tablet. And you're like, what the heck does it even say? Like, it's so hard to read. There is actually people who know how to read this. Um, and this one particularly uh, is describing clothing items and rations for women. Uh, and this comes from, I believe this is Sumerian, and it's actually located in the University of Minnesota library. All right, prehistory. Okay, so we talked about history. Here's the before stuff. That's the time before writing. Okay, so everything before 3400 BCE is going to be considered prehistory. Uh, for example, here's Omo Oni, which is a 233,000 year old skeleton that was found in Ethiopia. That's going to be prehistory because that was before writing. Okay. Um, and then there are also things that are more closer to home, like the Jeffers pirate or petroglyphs, which are about 7,000 years old. Okay, so no writing. These are all pictures or petroglyphs. Uh, and you can find that in southern Minnesota. All right, so artifacts. Artifacts are human made objects, such as tools and jewelry. So here's a few examples uh, like pottery, nails, scissors. Um, kind of beads, different other tools made out of shells or bones. Those are going to be artifacts. So who studies these artifacts? That's going to be the archaeologists. Okay, so they're going to study bones and artifacts from humans or pre-humans. Uh, oh yeah, this picture down here is from Peru. Um, and it's a dude like researching a Peruvian mummy. All right, so anthropologists, they study culture, which is a group's way of life, okay? Uh, and it's important to note that these groups can either be groups that lived thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, or it can be groups that are still alive today. And then of course there's paleontologists. So they study fossils that plant or animal room plant or animal remains that are preserved in rock, okay? So paleontologists aren't really going to do a whole lot on the human side, okay? That would be more of like the archaeologists. Um, but you know, like the cool dinosaur bones that you see at the museums and stuff? Yeah, that's going to be the paleontologists. And this is actually a jawbone from a T-Rex over in South Dakota. All right. So now we are going to talk about the oldest pre-human found. So in your textbook, uh, they talk about someone named Lucy, which I'll mention her really briefly. But your textbook is really old and outdated. And there has been a lot more findings since then. So I'm going to talk about Artie. So who Artie is, is she was a 4.4 million year old pre-human. So up here, you can see the skeleton of her. 
And then here's kind of like an artist's rendition of what she might look like. So this was found in Ethiopia. Um, and it was found about 46 miles from the other famous skeleton, Lucy, uh, which is only 3.2 million years old, not nearly as old. Uh, and what's so interesting about Artie is since the skeleton is pretty, I mean, it's not complete. You can see it's not complete, but it's, there's a lot of pieces there um, that the people who have been researching the skeleton can figure out that indeed Artie was a biped, which meant walked on two limbs. Um, but also she was a quadped and climbed trees with all four of her limbs. So Artie isn't not really a human, okay? She's a pre-human, but she is getting very human-like. All right, so where do we take our first steps? That is gonna be figured out by this person named Mary Leakey. Uh, and Mary Leakey's team discovered prehistoric footprints in Tanzania, uh, which you should all know where that is too, from the Kahoot in seven, or 1978. Um, so yeah, they're literally, that's the picture down there. They're literally like footprints in the hardened mud. Um, and then also there's the Laetoli footprints, um, which are the name of the footprints that Mary Leakey discovered, um, which belong to hominids, okay? And hominids is gonna be kind of an important word. Um, so that would be a creature that walks upright. So like modern day humans are hominids, Okay, but even pre-humans were also hominids. All right, more hominids. Hominids develop technology or ways of applying knowledge, tools, and inventions to meet their needs. That was the other big distinguishing thing about hominids. They can develop technology. Now, when I'm talking about technology, I am not talking about like cell phones and the internet. Like we think like, oh, technology. No, technology can also mean just different items that will help people in their everyday needs. Uh, for example, uh, here's an ancient Sumerian who is um, using a bow and arrow. That would be considered technology, okay? Or riding a horse, that's also considered technology. All right, now here's a fun time. I want you to try this. Try not to look it up. This is just for fun. Again, I'm not grading if you're right or wrong. But can you put all the human ancestors in order? Uh, so A is ne Neanderthals, B is Homo erectus, C is Homo sapiens, D is Homo habilis, and E is Cro-Magnons. So let's see if you can put them all in order. All right, here's the correct order. So you have Homo habilis would be the oldest, Homo erectus would be the second oldest, right in the middle is the Neanderthals, Neanderthals, oh my gosh. And then there's the Cro-Magnons and the Homo sapiens. And we're going to talk about all those. All right, so the Homo habilis, they are 2.5 to 1.5 million, um, not years in the past, million BCE. Okay, so we're talking like way before humans. I mean, they are like in the like the chimpanzee zone at that point. Uh, but the what they're called is called man of skill. And the reason for this is tools from lava rocks. That was one of their biggest distinguishing factors between them and other primates. Um, so what they used is obsidian. Uh, so obsidian is a lava rock. Um, and it is really, really sharp when shattered. It's almost like glass kind of sharp. Um, and that's what they use to make tools out of. Um, and then I put a little diagram here of how um, early humans might have made such like axes and arrows and stuff. All right, Homo erectus, that's 1.6 million BCE to 30,000 BCE. Um, and the name means upright man. They're more intelligent and adaptable. Yeah, I don't, I would assume they just looked at the size of like the brain cavity. I'm not really sure how paleontologists, or not paleontologists, archeologists would find that out. Um, and also these were the first pre-humans to migrate out of Africa, which we'll talk about too. All right, Neanderthals. They're from 200,000 to 30,000 BCE. 
Uh, they had the biggest brains. Okay, they had even bigger brains than us, like humans right now. Uh, they weren't good at communication. Uh, one thing that made them distinct is that they had ritual burials. Okay, so there's been like flower matter that had been discovered on grave sites. Um, they also had huge muscles and a body frame. And my question for you is this. What would that affect if they have like bigger body frames, bigger muscles? How might that affect what they do? All right, next up we have Cro Magnons. So that's about 40,000 to 8,000. Um, sorry, I should say BCE. Uh, so they are also part of the prehistoric humans, they are pretty much identical to modern day humans. Uh, they are classified as Homo sapiens sapiens. Um, the average height of them was about five foot one, so a little bit shorter than like modern day humans. Um, and one of the interesting things about that is they're really known for creating art, which we will talk about pretty quick. Oh, there we are. All right, so art. So you probably have seen those like cave paintings that are over in like Europe. Um, you know, with like the handprints and everything and drawings of animals. Um, so pre-humans and early humans use cave paintings for various reasons, such as religion, hunting, um, almost like a written history. So remember, this is before his like writing was invented, um, but they would use these like pictures to represent like different animals in the area or like celebrating different hunts. Uh, archaeologists has also found a flute in the Neanderthal cave in Slovenia. Yes, that's right, a flute. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but it is made out of a cave bear femur, and it's about 40,000 years old. And that's a picture of it down there. All right, so human migration in the beginning of agriculture. All human, early humans were also hunter-gatherers. Now, you've probably heard this before, uh, but just to clarify, um, so it's those humans uh, who depended on food supplies, on hunting animals and collecting foods from plants. Um, they also used stone tools. Okay, so this was too early for metals. These would all be stone tools. Uh, and early humans could also be nomads um, or highly mobile people who move from place to place foraging or searching for new sources of food. Uh, there are still nomads around today um, I know especially like um, in more rural parts of China um, and that kind of area in Asia, uh, there's a lot of like goat um, nomadic people. Uh, we will talk about air culture in the next lesson, by the way. So don't worry, we'll get more, more of this. All right, so humans leaving Africa. So it is estimated that they started leaving uh, Africa about 125,000 years ago. Uh, so Europe, saw their first humans, pre-humans, about 33,000 years ago, China about 67,000 years ago, Australia about 38,000 years ago, North America about 12,000 years ago, and South America about 12 to 33,000 years ago. Um, so out of all those, North America is probably the newest. So here's my question for you. How do you think archaeologists and anthropologists know this? All right, and if you wanna know the answer to that question, um, it's gonna be a lot through like uh, fossil, like fossil structure or like fossil records and um, just artifacts that they find. All right, so here is a map of the global spread of hominids. Okay, remember, so creatures that walk on two feet. Uh, so you can see here, everything kind of originates right out of this like Northern Africa, kind of like Near East area. Um, and then you'll see that it kind of spread over to Asia um, and then a little bit over to Europe. Uh, it kind of went down through all of these islands in Southern Asia to Australia. And then of course the land bridge that once connected uh, what modern day Russia and Alaska are. Uh, so humans could go over to North America and then down through the South America. All right, so why did 
hominids or prehumans or humans leave Africa. There are three main reasons. So the first one is competition with other humans. The second is following animal herds. And the third is just simply human curiosity. All right, so the Stone Age. There are two parts to the Stone Age. Um, there is the Paleolithic and the Neolithic. We're going to talk about both of them. So Pale Paleolithic Age is the Old Stone Age, and that was roughly between 2.5 million BC. Oh, I should say BCE. See, I even make mistakes to 8,000 BCE. Uh, so what makes the Stone Age the Stone Age? It was the invention of tools. Okay. Um, yes, these are going to be tools made out of stone. They're not going to be made out of metal. Uh, also mastery over fire and development of language um, are believed to have occurred during the Stone Age. Uh, so here's my question for you. What does paleo and lithic mean? So paleo means old and lithic means stone. So literally old stone. All right, let's talk about the Neolithic. So that is called the New Stone Age. So that was roughly between 8,000 BC and 3,000 BCE. Uh, so that's when people learn to polish stone tools, make pottery, which is a major one, uh, grow crops, which we'll talk about all in the next lesson, and raise animals, uh, which we'll talk about in two lessons from now. Uh, so here's a picture. This is an old Sumerian photo of two people in their chairs with a pot of some sort of drink that they are enjoying. All right, also in the Neolithic age, uh, you're going to get some more permanent structures for houses. Uh, so this is actually up by Stonehenge. So you see Stonehenge down here. Yep, that was made during the Neolithic age. Um, and then up here, too, is some English houses. Uh, they're replicas. OK, so these actually haven't survived since the Neolithic age. Um, but this is what they would have looked like back, back during the new Stone Age. And you can go there today. It's like a tourist attraction. All right. The other thing I want to talk about as well um, is this thing called a ziggurat. Um, and this one is specifically Tepe Saik. Sai, sai. Okay. Sorry. I can't pronounce that. Um, and this is a pretty significant ziggurat. So there is many different ziggurats. What they are, they're kind of like the pyramids before the pyramids. They're like these giant structures. Um, typically just made out of earth. Um, you know, it's kind of like they made kind of like a brick wall around it and then just filled it with earth. Uh, there were rooms and stuff um, and like chambers, uh, but those were more towards like the top of the ziggurats. And these things are massive. I know in this picture, it looks like, oh, like, I don't know, is it like a three-story house? No, I mean, we are talking like 20 stories in the air. Like these things were massive. Um, and what the point of them was is to or was to have kind of like a show of power like hey we have enough manpower we can make this big dirt mound um and also for like the be beginning of governments okay so when governments were forming in human society this was kind of like I don't know, like the White House of the government, you could almost say. Um, and also for priests as well. So we'll talk about religion a little bit later. But religion is really important to the ancient uh, people. Um, and also we'll talk about <laughs> flooding. It's really high off the ground. And people usually live by rivers. And when rivers flood, where do you go? You go to the high ground. Um, so that's also one of the importance. Oh, and in the specific ziggurat, why it's so important um, is because there's a lot of leftover uh, artifacts, such as fine pottery, as you see down here in this corner. Oh, OK. Woo. So next up, agriculture revolution. Um, I'll talk about the domestication of plants. And then in the next lesson after that, I'll also be talking about animals and how they spread diseases. Yay. Uh, make sure that you um, do lesson two on your study guide. Uh, if you have any questions at all or comments or yeah, critical feedback, I'm totally open to that. Uh, please let me know. Uh, if not, 
Have a great day. Bye.